What is up, guys? We are back with NFC Non Fungible Cast episode 23. Uh, you know, WT and I, this is our thing. This is what we do. We love chatting. Today, we have an amazing uh, episode here. We are talking about GOG, Guild of Guardians. You guys know we love Guild of Guardians. Uh, that's actually the community that, that we met in was uh, Guild of Guardians, where it started all. Uh, that is, to me, it is... I have the most faith in this. Is This is the game for me that I love uh, Guild of Guardians. I love the community. I love the people involved from the team to everything. And it's really good to get another episode out and, uh, and to talk about it. It has been a minute. So uh, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to catch up on. Uh, but first things first, WT, what is going on? How you doing, baby? Good, good. Glad to be back doing some GOG talk. It has been a minute, but boy, oh boy, has a lot change and it actually snuck up on me i was looking back at this the last couple of days and we had a uh, a quiet april for the most part we'll talk about that in a minute mm -hmm. but may they're sneaky uh i don't even know how you'd be sneaky but do so much all at once but they did it and looking back and i was like holy cow these guys were busy and i it just it flew by so quick i didn't even notice it but we're going to talk about that all today how yeah you yeah, no, I've been really good. I was on vacation, just got back. That's why, you know, we took a little bit of a week off. Uh, really, really, really good. Can't complain. Things things are okay. So, uh, yeah, like I like like you're saying, I think they've been very, very busy. GOG, uh, the team has been very, very busy, heads down, doing their thing. They're pumping out a lot of uh, content now. We want to get all into that uh, for sure. Um, I, I feel like April was just like, they were just kind of wrapping up the alpha and stuff like that. There's a lot of wrapping up the alpha. There was a lot of feedback, good and bad. There was a few things that people want to change, but for the most part, I think it was very good. I think it was very, very, very smooth. Uh, so they did like a fireside about that. You can find that video, I believe in the discord. It's up there somewhere. If you want to listen to, um, you know what they're doing with that, with all your feedback and stuff. But yeah, that was basically April. Uh, then may, they really came in just firing on all cylinders. They really upped their social game on Twitter. You see them everywhere from all of them. Like everybody's out there just firing away. Uh, Justin Hulog and Derek Lau, uh, they did a bunch of interviews, uh, including one with a very high profiled, uh, person named uh a youtuber named uh, mystic seven that was a really good one to listen to if you guys haven't listened to that um and uh derek has been a, a massive presence uh on twitter uh justin and ryan have been an, a, a massive uh presence on twitter and uh they've been very very active and i am Max has also been very 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 active uh which just gets us all excited that's really good so what are your thoughts on all of that you know you see so much activity now they're really pumping it out uh what are your thoughts Saying they've been active is such an understatement. I mean, I can't even keep up. It's just like bam, 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 day after day between IMX, Derek, Justin, Ryan, uh, uh, Mr. Kruger. I always mess him up. He's probably going to kill me for that one. <laughs> and then, of course, the GOG Twitter ran by the awesome Kalia. they just been hitting it every day, and it's really translated. You can see the core members kind of firing off that as well. They've been a lot more active. Uh, our, our, our real hardcore GOG DGENs. And it, it's really nice to see. And like I said, it's it's been sneaky, but man, looking back at it, I was like, holy cow. It, it just hats off to them. It, it's, it's good to see it. I think April, they were just in, let's grind. Let's get this game polished up. And they're probably progressing. And it was time for them to start opening up the social media gates. Yeah, like I said, you could tell they're on, uh, they're firing on all cylinders now. You can really, really see it. Everybody's so active. There's a lot of content going out uh, from all of them. From you know Ryan, I got to give Ryan a huge, huge shout out. The the man just he doesn't sleep. The guy is always there. He's always uh, pulling for the community. He's always putting stuff out there. Uh, they did an awesome uh, podcast, which I do want to get into in a little bit here. Uh, he's doing a really good job. All of them are. All of them doing a really, really, really good job. So they've been very, very busy. Um, yeah, Twitter has been blowing up. I'm seeing a lot more of GOG. Uh, uh, on the on the on my timeline again which is really nice because like we said you know april there was kind of like it looks like they had their heads down focusing on the alpha stuff the feedback and then maybe they just came back just firing away with everything which which looks really i like it i like to see that uh very 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 much okay um yeah so twitter and uh, i think twitter engagement twitter uh it, and that's the thing with especially in this space i feel like twitter is a good spot the main hub if anything to get your project out there and to get the word out there uh, Twitter is pretty much the the main spot. So seeing them so active now on there, it's, uh, it's, it's really good to see. Okay. So they also have the players, a revolution, uh, episode announced May 1st, a series coming from, uh, Guild of Guardians on Twitter space, uh, space is hosted by Ryan. Uh, this is awesome. This is awesome. So, 
Uh, like I was saying earlier, Ryan is very, uh, very, 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 very good at what he does. Uh, very good speaker. He's very knowledgeable about the space. Um, he knows what he's doing. What are your thoughts on this stuff? Yeah, uh, Player Revolution episodes was announced on May 1st, and I was like, oh, cool. I, I was wondering when they were going to start doing this. I had a feeling they were, and they did episode one, uh, had Derek Lau on, obviously, the game lead. You want to have the big dog on, and they had him on. Don't doubt Derek. You know what I'm saying? Because he is the silent assassin, as I like to call him. I don't know if he likes it or not, but I like calling him that. So, uh, but uh, Ryan had him on, and it was a very, very in-depth conversation. Very well done. Uh, they had a couple of rug pulls, like Twitter Spaces normally does. But besides that, it was excellent. And uh, they talked about several things. I'm going to get into it here with you. But what, right off the bat, they were talking about. Obviously, the millions of players that they want to onboard, which we're used to hearing, and we've always been like, wow, that's some big goals. But, you know, they went with the mobile RPG to get the bigger audience. It, it just the demographic of it is that big. So they went with it. That's a good start. And they really want to focus on the keys to a, su a successful game to bring on these hundreds of millions of players. And it, it starts with uh, the mobile platform, the ability to play with your friends. They're very big on that, and I like that. Uh, easy access to it, puts you in a non-gotcha game environment, which I came from that, and I absolutely hated it. Mm -hmm. And through all these aspects, they want to create this complete gaming experience. And while you're in this complete gaming experience, oh, by the way, blockchain's involved. And that's the kind of tone they want to set of, like, you're so immersed into their game. It's a quality game. It's fun. You're with your friends. Oh, and by the way, you can earn some stuff too while you're doing it. Yeah. And thoughts on that. Yeah. That's the thing too. Like I say, we've, we've mentioned this before where it's like, they focus on the game first. And to us, that's very, very important. It's game first. They want to onboard uh, all these players. They've always said it from the, from the start. This is free to play. They want to onboard all these players and you're going to be able to earn from this. And we've played the beta. We know it's a fun game. We know the game works. We know the fundamentals, the, the concept, everything is good. And uh, the fact that they want to, uh, they're going to, they, they say they're going to onboard all these players. I think it's very doable. Free to play mobile game, good game, uh, game comes first, good community behind it good uh developers good team behind it uh i think it's awesome and the fact that they're they're now like i said uh doing all these these podcasts and these 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 twitter spaces and getting so active on socials uh the word is starting to get out a lot faster i feel and you could you could feel the momentum you can feel like um you know because there was a lull for a while you know we got to say it as it as mm -hmm. it is it, there, it was quiet just like a lot of projects not just them it's a lot of projects there was a lot there was a it was a little quiet for a little bit but i you can almost see that that like that switch where it's just like all right they're putting the pedal down you're seeing the momentum come back you're seeing the morale you're seeing the community coming together and and i like that you know so uh, yeah definitely good so their first their first guest uh was Derek like you said uh, he, who is the, the game lead, uh, which is awesome. The second one, uh, was Howie, who is the game economist. And on June 1st, uh, they're going to have Caitlin and Ivan on, um, and they'll be doing that with Ryan. So what are your thoughts on that? Oh, it's awesome that they got all that coming. I mean, they're, they, they pack so much into this and like, even, even in the, the episode with Derek, I mean, they, they got into like the psychology of this stuff and, and why gamers are being hesitant and uh, what is scaring them. And it's, it's, it's a psychological thing. They think combined with uh, what the, the past has been from these big gaming companies, there, there's a lot of negative sentiment from gamers and mainstream big gaming companies. And then you bring into this new stuff that they don't know anything about. It just creates kind of like this fear atmosphere they're talking about. And they, they got to figure out ways to get through that. And they, they think they're going to be able to do it. And they're really going to focus on the fun of the game. And I, that's why I've always been so big on GOG about is that's their main focus. Yes. They want it to be blockchain. Yes. They want people to be able to earn, but we've seen uh, countless examples of, the earn first mechanic and people just want to take value out that's it's the extraction model right and they're more focused on how do we make it so that people don't want to extract but they want to put more back in because it's fun it's engaging it's what they want 
And I absolutely love that they're talking about these kind of co- t- uh, concepts. What do you think? Yeah, so I, I agree. When it's when they put the 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 tokenomics ahead of the game, I feel like it just brings in more investors and not gamers and players. And, and I think what they're trying to get is the players. So when you put the game first, yeah, of course you're going to get investors as well, but you're going to get the people that are there to play the game, not the ones that are just coming in, draining the liquidity pool, making a quick buck, whatever it is, and then they leave the game high and dry, see you later, t- uh, coin tanks. They're not looking for that. So with the Guild of Guardians, uh, with the game being first, you're going to have the people like like myself. I'm there for the game. You know, I want to play the game. That's what that's my main focus is to have fun, play with you know you and other friends I've made along the way. There's a bunch of people uh, I've met in the Guild of Guardians community, and you know just we can go out there and play and and start leveling up our heroes and and playing the game for what it is. And yes, there is the earn aspect. Um, that is there too, but that's not my main focus. My main focus is the game itself. I am a gamer, so it's nice when you have people that focus on the game before the tokenomics. You know, another uh, another great thing that they brought up uh, in the in the Derek conversation, and this one cracked me up kind of. Uh, they're talking about the mainstream games that they're very aware of the NFT gaming industry, and they're actually they're very threatened by it, which just cracks me up. I, I just I just find that hilarious, but. They're in a catch-22 situation. From what Derek was saying, like, it makes a lot of sense. Like, they're they're kind of screwed, man, because, like, they've got their old business model. And a lot of these companies are publicly traded. And so they're going to be heavily scrutinized if they get into this with, with them being publicly traded. And they're going to be afraid of that because of that. And also... If they get into this, their their former customers are going to, a large chunk of them are going to be upset at them. But at the same time, they probably realize that this is the future. This is the innovation. And we got to get into this. So they're kind of stuck. Like, mm-hmm. how do we get into this without making our customers mad, not getting in trouble with Johnny Law, and at the same time, not being late to the party and dying. So Derek was like, and I've thought this for a long time, they're probably going to hang back and acquire like they're gonna let everybody do all this groundwork and then when it's legal and they feel it's safe and their customers are coming around they're probably gonna come in and drop some major bucks probably to pick up what has already been designed and that just cracks me up that makes me happy i don't know what do you yeah think? i th- i think that i mean i i've we i've said this many times i think the future is blockchain i think i think that is the future itself and, and you're right i think a lot of these big name companies because there's there's this weird like uh, you know cloud hovering over blockchain where it's like you know, the, the typical gamers, you know, what the mainstream, whatever you want to call it, they're very anti this, but at the same time, they'll spend thousands of dollars on Fortnite skins that give them nothing in return. And, you know, but they're very against blockchain gaming where they could actually buy these skins and own them and it's theirs and they can do what they want with them. But for some reason, buying these skins that the game still owns and you can't do anything about it is okay. But once you get into the blockchain and you buy these skins or whatever you're buying and you own it, it's not okay, and I don't understand that. So I think I think the future is blockchain. I think a lot of these companies in, in, are all trying to get in. Like you say, I think they're they're trying to feel the waters, figuring out how, okay, where what's the plan to get us into it uh, without upsetting our player base because there is going to be a little bit of an uproar. We already know that mainstream uh, gamers are kind of you know anti blockchain for some reason, which uh, you know whatever it is, what it is. But uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think they're going to feel the waters, see, uh, try to figure out. You know, they got the lawyers, they got the big brain people that figure this stuff out. Uh, a way to get in without, uh, you know, with minimal damage kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, but I think, I think, you know, all these companies, Blizzard and, and you know, all, all of them, you name any company, I think they're all aiming to get into blockchain one way or another. I think, I think it's the only, the only play. I think everyone's going to end up uh, going that way. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, uh, the next one. So yeah, so Kate, Caitlin and Ivan will be on, uh, with Ryan on June 1st, uh, which is tomorrow, I believe, right? Is that today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. That'll be tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that. So guys, don't forget to uh, check that one out. Be there for that. Uh, which was, which was awesome because I actually, they did a dungeons diary, um, with Caitlin and Ryan, they live streamed it on YouTube. What? And maybe like a few days, a week ago. I don't remember how long ago it was, but, uh, it was really, 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 really well done. I think they did a really good job. Caitlin was playing in the dungeons. She was using different characters. She, she obviously has all of them unlocked. She's, you know, um, 
one of the producers. So she has all the characters. She was asking, what characters do you want us to see? Or what, do you, what characters do you want to see? I'll play them. So she was running through some dungeons with some characters. The game looks awesome. I felt like it looked like it slowed down a little. Did they slow it down a little bit? It looked like they kind of slowed it down a little bit yep. maybe. Uh, but, you know, I think their dynamic is really good. I think Caitlin and Ryan's dynamic is, is really well. I think they feed well off of each other. Ryan's very knowledgeable. I mean, Caitlin is too, don't get me wrong. But Caitlin was playing the game and Ryan was kind of just handling the chat. And uh, not just hand, but handling the chat and the questions and, and the information. And I think they bounced off each other very well. I think they did a very, very good job. Again, Ryan's very smart. Caitlin's very smart. They know what they're doing. And uh, the gameplay looked awesome. The gameplay looked awesome. They also showed the guild token. Did you see that part? They oh, were, yeah. yeah, they unlocked the guild token and stuff, which I thought was cool. I know a lot of people wanted to see that. I know Tomahawk was in there. I was watching it live. <laughs> I know Tomahawk was in there. Big shout out to my boy Tomahawk. Uh, you know, he was asking the questions and Ryan kept reading them out and yeah, he mentioned the guild thing and they, and they kind of did it and stuff. What were your thoughts on the gameplay? What were your thoughts on that, on that space and, uh, what you saw and what you heard? So much to say about it. We've had Caitlin on before and she was an absolute beast. She is the Swiss army knife mm -hmm. of this whole entire space. She just kind of has all these things that she does and she, she's an absolute beauty as you would say. Yep. And we got to see her little dog in the background. <laughs> we seen, uh, it was Ivan and I think Aaron. They were working on stuff. I think it was Aaron. I'm not sure. Was, I know Ivan was there and they were trying to get him to dance. It didn't work out, but maybe another time. But anyway, that's just like little fluff stuff that was cracking me up. Uh, they got into uh, seeing the backgrounds and they did put this out there that what is on there is not set in stone. It's just kind of like a starting point. But we got to see really cool stuff with the pets and like they were like uh, the, the legendary ones were like you collected 40% more cubelets in some cases, and you got to see the cubelets of what they look like and how many you were getting per dungeon run. We got to see a vast array of different heroes. I got to see my boy Cyrus in action, so I was happy about that. There's a hilarious part about Morax. She used to call him the eye thingy or something <laughs> like that, and I cracked up laughing because she doesn't know that he's a pet orange nerf ball that you're supposed to kick it's just what i've been saying forever but i loved it when she said that, that made me laugh and uh there, there there was so much information there to look at and even though it's not set in stone it gives you something of a template to go off of of like what is this going to be like and i thought it was a great i thought it was great by them to put that out there because it gives us yeah. something to chat about and like speculate about so Kudos to them for doing it. I absolutely loved it. What what yeah. else do you think about yeah, it? Yeah, I thought I thought it was awesome. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Again, like I said, their 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 band, their their vibes and stuff back and forth were great. Uh Caitlin was just crushing those dungeons. And like you said, she's a Swiss Army knife. She's uh got a lot of, you know, and she's got a lot of superpowers, man. She's out there just crushing it. So uh, really, 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 really good job. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, those. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to them. I hope they do many, many more of those. I'm really, 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 really looking uh, forward to that. Um, yeah, like I say, Caitlin, Ryan, Kalia, all those, uh, Justin. There's so many out there. Derek, so many out there just putting up the content and and really uh, putting the pedal down. We got to um, talk about uh, we got to talk about Howie, man. Howie, Howie. Some stuff too. Yes, he How uh, he did that. Uh, uh, the Twitter space with Ryan, and that was very technical, but my gosh, was there some good stuff in there. Uh, he reiter it reiterated some points that Derek did, and one that I found that they both said was that this is a new roadmap, and they they mentioned the word, you know, roadmap, and it made me think of Pioneers, which we've talked about before, being Pioneers in the space, and with the economies that they're learning as they go, and they're very focused on what works, but they're more focused on what doesn't work so that they can learn from that mm -hmm. to make sure that this economy is successful. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. I like how they have like, even through a bear market, they are so set up to succeed. And I like that. I like, I like their build model. I like how they're very confident in it. They're like, yeah, we're, we are designed, we are built to absolutely last this bear market five, six years, whatever it is. We are absolutely built for this. And I'm, and, that, and, and, you know, and you can tell they mean it. They're not just saying it just to kind of appease the crowd. Uh, they're very confident in it and it put more com I mean, I already had the confidence in it, but it put more confidence. Like, yeah, the, uh, you know, I'm not worried at all. I'm not worried about it at all. I think, uh, I think they have the proper build for it, the proper structure. And, uh, yeah, I think they're okay. And I like, I like how they really, they even said, yes, we're in a bear market right now. Things are, you know, but we're fine. We're, we're built for this. So no sweat. There's two other key things I wanted to talk about before we move on. Uh, one, 
One's more serious and one's pretty funny. So we'll do the serious one first. Uh, he was talking about, he mentioned it, and they've said this before. We've heard this before. Early adopters are going to be rewarded. So I loved hearing that because a lot of us are early adopters. But they did kind of go into the, how that is not sustainable, these high prices that we see in these markets. If everybody that gets in, the, if 100 million people or how many tens of millions of people get into this game, not everybody can make thousands and thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not sustainable. It's not realistic. So he, he kind of set it up to where early re adopters are going to be rewarded, which is good. But I think from what he was saying and what the team has been saying for a very, very long time, and they've been very transparent about it, I think as the game progresses, there's still going to be rewards there, but they're going to be a lot smaller so they can spread them out amongst many people and that's not a bad thing a lot of investors are going to hear that and they're like ah oh, you know but if you're early you're probably going to make money it's not guaranteed but the chances are good but long term you want the game to be sustained so setting up a model to where you can still make a decent amount of money but not crazy lambo money that's not a bad thing i think they're on right. the right path i think they got the right thoughts of how to make this work without it dying and before you comment on this i gotta throw this out there they got into how Holly, this is the funny part. He was talking about, uh, Brian brought it up. Ryan, Ryan's cold blooded, man. <laughs> how he got tricked at like the age of 12 into giving away, uh, he clicked on a link or something for Diablo 2. And there was a way you could dupe in Diablo back yeah. in the day. I can't yeah, remember, yeah. it's a long time ago. Yeah. Well, he was doing it and thinking he was gonna get rewards. Well, they tricked him and all his gear got stolen immediately. And he was 12 years old, so you can imagine the mindset, right, right. you know? And so like, he publicly admitted he went crying to his mom. And I thought, <laughs> kudos to you for having the balls to say that. But man, I was dying laughing. And <laughs> Ryan was Ryan was sticking it to him. Man, Ryan's cold blooded, dude. So I know I gave you a lot there. What do you got to He's say? He's a shark. About that? He's a shark. Yeah. Um, no, it, it, like I say, man, I think uh, and 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 at first with the uh the airdrops they gave. So so yeah, I like how they wanted to like kind of slow play it a little bit. Not slow play it, but they're not gonna give you, like you say, you know, they're not gonna give you a Lambo money, just go have fun. But they they not not Lambo money, but they gave out a lot of money with the first airdrop that they did. They gave a lot of tokens out and all that stuff to the early adopters, which was they don't have to do that stuff. Nobody has to, you know, they don't have to do this stuff, but they did. Uh, and I like that. And I like how I think you're right. I think they're gonna kind of, you know, uh, give rewards out gradually as things happen. And and we talked to uh, on our last podcast we did uh, when we had Justin on. They're saying, listen, they want to even start. They really want to start rewarding their creators and people that are helping build this brand. So these they want to reward the people that are sticking it out. They want to reward the people that are here for the product that, yeah, some are investors, of course, but the ones that are here for the long game, like you and I, we're here for the long game. Many other people are, not just us. There's many, many, many people that are here for the long game as well. But, uh, you know, and and I think they're seeing that. The ones that are that are here for the game, the product, the community. And, uh, and I, I still feel like they're going to get rewarded. Absolutely. I feel and not that we're expecting it you know there's no expectations if it happens great if not that's fine we're not owed anything you know what I mean that's not we aren't owed anything at all but if it's there great and if not that's fine too uh but yeah I think like you said uh gradually there will be either little airdrops or little thank yous or little somethings or contests or giveaways or whatever it is you know they're good for it they got a good community they got they got some big brains back there they know what they're doing they know what they're doing yeah, mm -hmm. and the Diablo thing, I actually know exactly what you're talking about. I, I was a big, big Diablo too. That's that's the reason why I wanted to get into, not why I wanted to get into Guild Guardians, but it was like, I love the dungeon crawlers. I'm a big Diablo right. fan. This is, you know, it's, you know, it's just, but it's play to earn and blockchain and all that. So I, that's what got my attention to get in here in the first place. So yeah, oh yeah, I know all about Diablo, the dupe thing, all that stuff. Oh yeah, poor guy. Listen, man, I feel you. I feel you, but uh, hey, it is what it is, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, okay. So that was the dungeon diaries. That was, um, uh, also the players revolution we're talking about. They did an awesome job on those. Uh, another thing. So I am Max. Let's talk about this. I am Max, uh, is going through a massive, massive high. I actually, I'm not even kidding. I, I want to apply for some of the, I'm probably going to apply for a couple of jobs. I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, I'm thinking about it. Uh, I've never, so for, you know, not to get into about me, but I have never, I worked construction for 20 years and then I did, I now I do streaming. So I've never actually had a resume in my life. I don't have a resume. I gotta, I gotta come up with one. So, uh, I gotta do that. So, uh, but they're going through a massive, massive, massive hiring, uh, spree 
I guess you want to call it. They're up 86% in hiring in the last six months. That's huge. That's a lot. Um, and you know what? They're not slowing down. They put uh, they put uh, posts out there. They're looking for more people. And that to me shows they they aren't they're they're coming they are coming in to take over the industry. They're they're not slowing down. This is a bear market, and they're still hiring. They're saying, "Listen, we we can't slow down. We got lots we got lots going on. We need more people. We need more bodies. Let's go." Um, and I I love to hear that. So, what are your thoughts on the on the hiring spree? Uh, I mean, they 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 had a whole list of of jobs uh, that are that are coming out and stuff, and uh, so much to talk about it. So yeah, what's your what's your thoughts on the spree on the hiring spree? I think, I think IMX is positioning themselves, and I don't know if this is the correct example, but it's the only one I can think of of late to make it easy for people to understand that don't really want to get into the technical uh, analysis analysis of this is. I believe that they are trying to position themselves to be the Amazon of the NFT digital asset market. And they don't want just some of the NFT gaming industry. They want it all. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want it all. And that they, Bravi has come out repeatedly. I've heard him say this several times about, they want to be the piping infrastructure of all this. And I think with their Starkware technology being the magic sauce to make this happen with the ZK rollups, I think they can do it. I think they are fiscally supported to do it. I think they've got the product to do it. They've got an excellent PR guy in Robbie. I mean, Mm -hmm. he's a stud when he talks. People listen when he talks. I don't know if you've noticed that, but they just listen. I know I do. Maybe I'm biased. But anyway, they, I think they're, I think they got the confidence now. I think they got everything lined up, all the puzzle pieces in place. They got the confidence and they're like, all right, it's time. And they unleashed who knows how much money into this hiring spree. I mean, they started off with three people back in 2017. And the last number I heard, they're at like 285 and they expect to be up to 350 by the end of the year. GOG alone is up to a hundred, over a hundred people that are somehow, some way working on the game. They have roughly 20 ish core members. And that is increased from just Derek by himself <laughs> within Crazy. what a year. Uh, no, he started on this a couple years, two, three years ago, and then it was him and Nick uh, about a year and a half ago, and then now they've got 20 core and plus the the overall 100. So they have just, they're ready. They got the confidence. They're walking the walk. They just went after Board Ape Yacht Club slash Yuga Labs and made a corporate style pitch to them saying, hey, you need to come to our platform, and this is why. Because Yuga Labs had that, disastrous launch of their land and it just there was like a hundred i think a hundred million dollars lost to miners over it and it, they they imx swooped in and said this is why you need to be on a platform right. this is what we can solve for you and since i've been in the crypto industry since 2013 my biggest question ever every day when i get into this when i look at something is like what does this solve what does this do and imx gets that and they've created a platform to start out with video games, and this is just me speculating, not financial advice, not medical advice, but I like my chances here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they have created this platform, and I firmly believe they are making all these moves, and we're just seeing the tip of it. We're going to see more this year, I really, really believe. It's staking mm-hmm. still coming. Oh, so much to talk about. I just, man, I'm exploding here. So let me get back on track. They are setting up for this platform to get the video game industry in, make it easy for any game developer to come in. They don't have to worry about blockchain. They don't have to worry about contracts. Mm -hmm. What is your game? Come in, we're gonna plug it in for you and you use our platform to get what you would need to get done. Oh, and oh, by the way, there's some blockchain in the background, just like GOG and Derek does. You know, it's the same theme with these guys. And I believe, and I've heard it from Ravi, I've asked him personally on on an AMA, this is just a start with these guys. When they can prove that this video game uh adoption works all the kinks are sorted out i believe they will go into other industries like real estate Mm -hmm. auto i mean it's it's endless retail robbie mentioned wine i don't even know how they're going to do it but he was talking about wine and i'm sure there's a way to code things and all that and and put a qr code on it and track it and i man this is why i get so excited about this company because they are solving a problem Mm -hmm. For, for a real world application. And I think they can do it. Is it guaranteed? No, but man, do I like my chances here. 
I know I gave you a lot. No, oh God, buddy. <laughs> so I, I, I've listened to Robbie talk a few times, a bunch of times. And, and like you said, when he talks, you listen and oh, half the times I don't really understand what he's saying because he's just on a whole nother level. It's just, but it, you know, he is so smart and he understands and you sit there and it just, and then he stops to pause for a second, like, cause he just spews it out and it's, it, it all makes sense in his head and you're trying to wrap it in and you're trying to understand what he's saying. And my mind is just like, and it's just. You know it's all. You know it's good. Like you know it's good. You just you, you can't wrap your head fully around it. But yeah, you're right. Like they're talking about the the wine and all this stuff. Like they have these ideas, and I think it's just stuff that we can't even understand yet. They see the vision. Uh, we have to see it when they're like, okay, here's the product, and that's the beauty of of these people that have those visions is they see the vision that obviously nobody else has seen yet because it's not in existence. And then they're like, well, here it is. Here's the product. And then you're like that actually makes sense. Like, why didn't I think of that? Or why didn't anybody else think of that? It totally makes sense. And they're at that level where it's like, yeah, wine or insurance or cars or whatever you're, you know, whatever it is, these are the type of people that come up with those things. And, 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 and I love that. I think, I think he's an absolute genius. And like I said, if you haven't heard him talk before, go back, listen to, he's done some of the Brian scent. Uh, he's done some with, I don't know, there's a bunch out there and you'll sit yeah, there it, and your jaw will just hit the floor. When you hear him talk, the guy just, it'll blow you away. Yeah. I, I big, uh, he's been on a big media push lately, him and, uh, oh gosh, mm, they're, uh, their CTO, uh, Alex kindly, uh, they, they've been all over the place lately. And, oh, by the way, they, they own and have published Gods and chain and Gilded guardians. We got a, a mega, corporate style dud that owns the companies that our assets are in. How can you not be excited? I mean, I just, Oh, and I see that. And I see them wanting to start absorbing a lot of other companies as well. And, and concepts and games. And they're trying to, you know, they're pulling people in and, and that's just the start. You know, they're going to pull a few here, pull a few here. Next thing you know, it's going to get bigger and bigger and, and uh, the big umbrella starts and, and uh, yeah, Daddy IMX, man, it's uh, you can't don't bet against them. Do not bet against yep. them. That's my best advice. Not financial advice. Not, as you say, uh, what do you call it? Mental advice. What do you call it? Medical advice. Medical it's advice. Advice. We are not doctors. We're yeah. not financial advisors, but we like our chances. We like our chances. Uh, yeah. So that was, so like I say, guys, I, I'm bullish on it as well. And like, like WT said that, you know, staking, everyone's, you know, expecting staking coming mm. soon and, and uh, the announcement, all that stuff. And same with, I guess, GOG tokens. And so there's a bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of things that people are, you know, uh, expecting or waiting uh, for. And, uh, you know, I'm super bullish, man. I'm super bullish on all of it. Um, anything that we missed? Probably. I mean, th- it's been a busy month. This is a general summary because yeah. <laughs> we know a lot's going on. So we just want to kind of get something out there, get back in it. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're dialing back in. Expect more GOG content soon. And uh, yeah, NFC cast all the way, baby. Yep. NFC and uh, GOG. And I'll tell you, we, I definitely want to fire more of these out once we get more information. Um, big shout out to Ryan, Caitlin, Kalia, you know, Justin, Dare, all you guys, everybody out there. Uh, all the other ambassadors out there doing your thing, you know, keep it up. Great job, man. You got, you know, we're, you know, we're all in this, we're all, you know, and, and, and we try to watch everyone's stuff as well. Uh, you guys are all killing it. All the, all the community, just people, you know, people in the community building it for what it is. I always say this, man, the community builds the community. Every single person in the community is so important because that's what builds the community. The community is the community. So uh big shout out to everybody part of the GOG uh, community. Even if you just came in the other day, big shout out, you know? So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think we covered everything. Uh, guys, don't forget, let's get these videos out there. Click the like, click, uh, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know all the stuff. If we missed anything, anything you want us to talk about, uh, do you agree with us? Do you disagree? Let us know. Let us know in the comments below. Um, all right. Uh, also, if you want to come on, we're always looking for people to come on. If you, if you feel you can come on, you want to have something to talk about or whatever, yeah. let us know. We can, we can figure something out. We always want to bring people on, talk to people. We have no problems with that. So, uh, we'll get there as well. All right, guys, I think that's it for this episode. So, uh, like I said, we, we kind of, we went through a lot. There was a lot to talk about. I'm sure we could have done a lot more. There's so much to talk about and, uh, we're going to be doing more of these very, 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 very soon. So keep, uh, yo, make sure you click the like the notification button. You know, the drill. All right, guys, WT close us out. We're out of here. Let's go. Peace.